What's up guys? This video is about whether to attend college or even higher level education. And this question actually leads to a vague but important thinking. What and how to learn in our 20s? The answer may differ hugely depending on where you are. From my personal experiences and knowledge, students in the United States usually think about this weather problem more extensively than Chinese students, mainly because of the expensive tuition fee for the universities in the US. They will contemplate questions like this. Can I earn the money back? Is it worthwhile to spend four years in a school learning about irrelevant skills? I may earn a whole lot of more money if I choose to work compared to attending college. On the other hand, because of the well-known exam Gaokao in China, most Chinese students will try to get into the best university that matches their grades in this final exam. I believe a huge portion of families and students themselves consider this opportunity to be a fate-changing game, as no matter rich or poor financially, the only thing matters in the admission of top universities is the score. Also, because of the strong support from Chinese government, as long as one score is enough to be admitted to a top university, it is not possible for he or she to fail to enter the university because of financial reasons. It can be a hard debate in the United States about whether or not to attend college. In China, although the majority will attend college if they can, students may not totally understand why they are doing this. And there will be a period people are so confused about what to do in the college. I had those confusing periods in the past and I will probably have them in the future. But I'm now standing at a point that I finished my undergraduate study in a top university, Zhejiang University in China, and I've done all the courses I need to take for my PhD program at the University of Chicago. Oh shit, a B! Never mind. Sometimes it happens, but the GPA is enough. I think I'm somehow qualified to talk about this question, about the value of college I get, and my thinking about what and how to learn in our 20s. So let's roll the intro. First of all, I want to address the learning knowledge part of the college. To be honest, the traditional college way of learning is proven to be less effective compared to the modern online learning methods. Students sitting in a classroom learning about calculus, partial differential equation, and some sorts of operating system, computer organization, complexity theory makes the already confusing content harder to understand because students can hardly stop to think about it if they cannot catch up with the teacher's speed. And this usually leads to chain reaction in mathematics-related subjects. If you experienced that, you would understand the feeling. I honestly completely don't know how to solve the partial differential equation now as a computer science PhD student. Moreover, as the universities focus more on the research side, Professors are usually too busy to prepare the course materials to the extreme extent. For instance, they can hardly afford to make animations to explain how the Turing machine works, to demonstrate the Linux operating system code lively, simply because that would take too much time. As for the modern online learning method, on the internet, there are people and teams that are willing to spend 10-20 hours to make 10-minute content. More extremely, if you consider Hollywood movies, their teams are willing to spend days or even months to make visual effects of a few seconds perfect. Imagine, if your teachers spend days to make 10 minutes content perfect and those contents add up to a whole course, then it is a real enjoyment to watch even if those contents are your courses. If you want to learn about how to write a website, how to use databases, how to learn some programming language like Go or Python, I find it much easier and faster to learn by watching some lectures on Udemy, Udacity, Skillshare, or even by just finding some free YouTube videos that cover your demand. As Elon Musk said, you can find everything you want to learn on the internet. So in terms of the easiness of learning knowledge, I would give a point to not attending college. But here comes the problem. How do you know what you want to learn if you don't go to the college? If you don't have the courses that you have to pass or the pressure to get a very high GPA, why would you ever want to be tortured by the complexity theory or discrete mathematics? 
In addition, you still have access to all the online courses and internet when you do attend college. And therefore it's not a pick one problem, but you can actually take both. That leads to my first advice of attending college. Use the resources on the internet to learn your courses. Professors at the university will not teach you how to code step by step, but the instructors on Udemy will. Second, I want to talk about the possibility to get hired. This would be a quick one as I'm not so super qualified to talk about it because I didn't work in some companies, but I did look for jobs on multiple platforms. In China nowadays, whatever jobs seem to require a high degree, like bachelor's degree is the minimum and master's degree is the normal, something like that. I intended to find some videography job as I dreamed to be a filmmaker. This is actually some type of jobs that are totally unrelated to college degrees but I can clearly see a difference in salaries separated by the degrees. It's actually super hard for people who do not have a college degree to find jobs even in super small companies in China. People would say, start a business yourself. That is a good point, but believe it or not, it's a much, much, much harder job than attending a college. You need to learn way more than you are required in a college degree to accomplish a successful business. Beyond the efforts and work you put in, you also need some luck to survive in the competitive market. So if you decided to become an entrepreneur, you are a genius, you have great resources and knowledge about starting a business, you feel that college is a waste of time and you know what you're doing, then good luck and receive my respect. Other than that, giving up college to be hired for some job is not a wise decision for normal people like you and me. Third, I would like to elaborate on the benefit of freedom in college. The university is actually the most tolerant places that embrace all kinds of creativity and mistakes. Young people always make mistakes no matter how reluctant we are about this fact at the current stage. In a company, if you make serious mistakes, you can easily lose your job, but in a university, as long as you don't cheat on exams and papers, you can hardly get any serious consequences. Also, you don't have a boss that pushes you to the extent that you don't have any time for your personal life and interests. You can always learn some skills you like but are not so relevant to your major. It's even possible for you to nurture your ideas about starting your own business. In simple words, the most beneficial thing I find in the university is that you have time. If you are just beginning your journey to the undergraduate study, I suggest that you make a serious plan about your time, though plenty of you won't listen cause I didn't listen. I was just thinking about passing all the courses and studying hard when I was a freshman. I'm glad that I decided to join some clubs and organizations during my undergraduate years, but I'm a bit regretful that I didn't spend enough time in some of those organizations and build long-term relationships with people. It's okay, as I am a PhD student now, and I still have four years to compensate what I'm regretful about in the school. If I were to convey one sentence to the younger version of me and other 18-year-old teenagers, I would say, health is the most important fortune that you should hold, and healthy time is your limited wealth that you should spend wisely. In terms of whether to pursue a PhD degree, it's also a hard question for many people, including me but I hope to explain it by the term unfair advantage. According to a famous formula, I don't remember where I saw it, but I find it useful. The success is equal to the amount of work you put in, multiplies by the luck you have, multiplies by the amount of unfair advantage you possess. This formula is a bullshit in terms of mathematics, but it emphasizes that people often focus on the former two aspects, but forget about the third one, unfair advantage. It's also called asymmetric information or resources, whatever. It means that you need to possess some features that normal people don't have to succeed. The PhD degree is one public well-known way to achieve the unfair advantage if you don't have a strong father. There are other ways to achieve the unfair advantage. For instance, you can work in some tech companies and learn about their architectures and the technologies, which are usually 10 years ahead of the academic world if you have access. Anyway, on the edge of graduating from college, you should be looking for the unfair opportunities. 
and you are the one to choose which opportunity creates the largest unfair factor that can help you achieve success. Thanks for watching. This is a video about my thinkings of whether or not to attend college and pursue a PhD degree. Hopefully, you can apply some of the suggestions mentioned above to your life and gain some insights from my analysis and opinions. If you find the content useful and you consider it helped you, please smash the like button and click subscribe for more awesomeness. And I will see you next time.